So it's no secret to anyone that Pro Tools has long been the standard for our industry, and as the Essential DAW continues to evolve, so have Avid's interface offerings. Earlier this year, we saw the brand's release of the Matrix Studio, but today it's my extreme pleasure to give everyone a first look at the Pro Tools Carbon. This thing is loaded with features, there's so much to unpack, so let's jump right into it and see what this is all about. Well, the first thing you might want to know is what's the I.O. situation? Carbon has the ability to run 25 by 34 simultaneous ins and outs, which includes eight very transparent onboard mic pre's with variable Z on inputs five through eight. The interface also features two variable Z instrument inputs and four headphone outs, perfect for monitoring a whole band. And let's not forget, we have stereo monitor outs, eight by eight line in and out, 16 channels of eight ad IO, word clock IO, a foot switch, as well as two high bandwidth, low latency ethernet ports. One of the most important features of Carbon is how it seamlessly integrates with Pro Tools using onboard HDX so you can push your CPU to the limit when working with virtual instruments and mixing with near zero latency. No third party apps required. Looking at conversion, we have four ADCs per channel providing 126 dB dynamic range. From input to the HDX DSPs into Pro Tools, the entire gain structure works at uniform 32-bit precision, giving you more headroom without signal loss. Carbon features distortionless, artifact-free precision clocking using a double resolution designed by Jet PLL, ensuring high fidelity capture and playback. In addition to the 115 AAX plugins that are included with Pro Tools, Carbon comes bundled with virtual instruments from Arturia, UVI, and native instruments, as well as Dynamics, EQs, and Amp Sims from MicDSP and Plugin Alliance. There's a lot more to unpack with Carbon, but let's get into the demo. So what are we doing today to celebrate this release? We have our great friend Olivia Deer here with us in the Vintage King video studio to track a song with a band live. We're gonna do a bunch of overdubs, and then Brian Riley's gonna take us through the tracking and mixing process using Carbon, all the plugins that are included and hear the final mix at the end. All right, so we just got done tracking Olivia Deer in her brand new song, You Don't Even Like Me, live as a three-piece band here at our Vintage King studio. We had Olivia on keys, we had Takashi Io on bass, and myself on the live drums. And we tracked everything live through the Pro Tools Carbon, and then we did a handful of overdubs and production tricks. So let me walk you through the tracking process. For the initial live band tracking, I had Olivia's Nord keyboard plugged into the Hi-Z input number one on the front of the Carbon. Takashi's electric P bass was plugged direct into Hi-Z number two. And then I had a kick, snare, overhead left, and overhead right, which were plugged directly into the internal preamps of the carbon on channels five, six, seven, and eight. And on all of those initial sources, we didn't use any plugins or EQs or outboard gear on the way in. We only used the ultra transparent preamps directly in the Pro Tools carbon. So when we did the initial tracking, I didn't want to track to a click track. So I pulled a loop from the included Avid sample library, and I chopped it up a little bit to match the 6-8 feel of this song. Uh, so then we added my live drums on top of it, which is just that kick, snare, overhead left, overhead right. And then on top of all that, I added some samples and a little bit of trickery to make it just sound bigger and poppier. And some of the plugins that I used on there were just all the included Avid plugins, which include the EQ7 band. I used the EQP1A Pultec plugin. I used Maxim, the BF76 Bomb Factory 1176 peak limiter, the old trusty Lo-Fi to kind of give some grit and soften up some of the transients and the really high frequency. I used D-verb to add some space. And lastly, on the drums, I used smack on the overheads to glue them together. So let's hear how all that sounds together.
So for the DI signal of Takashi's bass in the mix, all I did, I added the EQP 1A, and that's at just adding low frequency. And then I also used the Bomb Factory just to glue it all together. And then for the upright bass, I didn't do any EQ in the mixing session. I also just used the Bomb Factory just to kind of glue the low and the high frequencies together and then push that up in the mix. So let's hear how all that sounds together. Since we tracked Olivia's Nord mono, I actually wanted that to be a little wider and a little more exciting in the overall mix. So I used the um, C1 chorus and vibrato and mono to stereo. So that ended up spreading it out and adding this really nice depthy chorus to it. And then I just brought the mix back down to 60 so it's not complete chorus. Uh, then I used the Fairchild 670 just to glue the transients together. And it was ended up getting just a little honky in the low mid-range, so I used the EQ7 just to carve that out. So let's hear how that sounds. In the mixing process, the OP6 and the Matriarch both sounded incredible the way that they were. So as you can see, I didn't do anything to them, but let's hear how they sound. For the acoustic guitar, I used a U87 and I close mic'd it pretty close because I wanted it to be very present in the track. Uh, but by close miking it, it ended up being a little woofy. So I used the EQ7 to carve out some of the low mid frequency. And then just to make it pop a little bit more, I added just a little bit of mid range back into it. And then following the EQ, I added our trusty BF76 just to glue it all together. And let's hear how that sounds. So moving on to the lead vocal, um, there's a Bit of processing happening in the mix here, uh, but again, all using the included Avid plugins. So on Olivia's lead vocal, I'm using the EQ7 band just to take out some of the low frequency that just is unnecessary in her voice. And that's also adding just a high shelf at like 3K to make her poke through. I left on the MC77 that we used while tracking just because it sounded wonderful. Following that, I used an EQP 1A plugin, and that's adding quite a bit of 16K just to make her stand out over everything else in the track. And then I'm also using the low frequency to carve out, again, some of the woofiness that was added back from the compression of the MC77. And then lastly on that is the included Avid DSer. And then one thing you'll hear in the pre-choruses before the big choruses happen is this kind of haunting little vocal effect. And for that, I used the included non-linear reverb plugin on the reverse setting. And I just duplicated a copy of that section of her vocal, shift it back a little bit in time, and then set the mix to 100 on that track. And it creates that nice kind of tense moment that leads into the chorus. The additional processing that's happening on her lead vocal throughout the song is a vocal doubler, which I'm using the included ensemble plugin uh, the mix set to 100, and it's set to its default parameters. And that's just making her stereo and exciting throughout the track. And then there's also a parallel compressor on her lead vocal to push her vocal forward into the track and all the instruments. Uh, and that is a 
BF76, and then that's followed by an EQ3 seven band, and that's just taking off some of the low end that doesn't need to be there again in her voice. And the effect that you're hearing, the reverb effect on her vocal throughout the song is just a large plate setting on the D-verb. And then I like to follow that with the lo-fi plugin and I'll turn down the sample rate just a little bit just to take away some of that high artifact kind of stuff that's in there. So let's hear all those sound. Give it a couple of years in my body. I give it all up again if you asked me. Once again, you got me right where you want me. And I'm well aware, but is that such a bad thing? Call, hang up, I might be hung up. Damn, why am I here again? You don't even like me, damn. Why am I coming in? You don't even like me, man. Look at us sleeping in. I'm almost forgetting. So lastly, I just want to explain the couple things that are happening on the final mix boss. Um, so everything in the track is being summed into an aux track that just has the included Fairchild 670 on there. And that's only compressing maybe one or two dB, just kind of gluing the drums and all the instruments together. That is followed by an EQP 1A, and that is boosting quite a bit of 16K um, throughout the entire track. Then I'm also adding a little bit of 60 just to make that low end of the drums and everything a little more exciting. And then finally, it's followed by the Pro Multiband Dynamics um, Avid plugin, which is wonderful. And this is basically carving out some of the build up in the low mid that's happening from basically the guitars and the vocals and the synths and all that. I just wanted that to be a little clearer. So this is on the mix bus. And one thing to note is that the lightning bolt is on, which means that we are using the internal DSP of the Pro Tools Carbon. So all of these are happening with zero latency or anything affecting the quality of our mix. So let's hear how it sounds. Everyone, thanks so much for checking out the Avid Pro Tools Carbon with us today. 
think a big takeaway after spending some time at the Carbon is if you're a seasoned Pro Tools veteran, if you're a professional working in the industry, if you're somebody who has a home or project studio that's just looking to upgrade their centerpiece, the Carbon has so much to offer musicians, music makers, producers of all sorts. We've had a hands-on session with it. We've experienced the seamless integration with Pro Tools. You factor in the price point, and this is without a doubt one of the most exciting releases of 2020. And if you want to learn even more about this interface, we did an interview with the Director of Product Management over at Avid talking about the behind-the-scenes development of Pro Tools Carbon, the nuts and bolts, and everything that makes it tick. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.